welcome to tset so let's continue with the discussion that we are having so we started with measures of national goods as a first topic and in the previous class i have given you the introduction related to different types of goods okay and then we have seen what is the meaning of factors of production then i defined you what is the national income and different methods of measuring national income and we also seen the concept of value addition because these days you would be finding this very prominent one called gross value addition or gva method of computing gdp so if you are aware of what exactly is the value addition and you know that every particular product starting from production to distribution to retail happens to undergo various uh, stages and these particular stages during these particular stages uh, whatever is the contribution of labor and capital is whatever okay is what we compute as a value addition so the sum of value addition in all these stages in all sectors of the economy that is agriculture the elite sector industrial sector i don't say industrial sector we represent industrial sector as mean mining quarrying manufacturing gas construction electricity other utility services and then service sector so in all these particular sectors whatever is the value addition that takes place during any particular particular stage we happen to submit at the market value is what we call it as simply gdp now let's look at continue the okay, discussion of the first topic and look at the first and foremost measure of national income that is a gdp gdp stands for gross domestic product so whenever you come across this particular term okay it is the most important thing that you need to emphasize is a domestic and if you are aware of what exactly is the domestic production then the definition is going to be very much simple so how will you define gdp gdp is the value monetary value so when i say monetary value anything expressed in terms of money value these many rupees these many dollars or these many euros that's what we call a monetary value monetary has been simply money money value because there are different ways of expressing your output let's say if i ask a person from china what does your country produces the man that particular chinese guy could say my country produces 1000 shirts my country produces 200 million tons of wheat 300 million tons of rice 400 tons of so and so isn't it so you could express the output of your country in terms of a basket of goods and services you produce okay let's say a country could produce a basket of goods okay some moment some number of mobile phones laptops isn't it so you could express the output of your country in terms of basket of goods and services similarly a country b could produce a different basket of goods and services and he could also express the output that my country produces okay some ak47 my country produces rocket launchers my country produces some grenades let's say so different nations could express their output in different basket of goods and services but it would be very difficult to compare which particular country among these two nations is rich and poor isn't it so hence forth the very common thing that we do is express the value of this output in terms of money value so in india we happen to choose the unit of measuring value okay so the unit of value in india we happen to choose is rupee whereas american happen to choose american dollar and european happen to choose euro isn't it and britishers they use pound sterling so these are different units like we express the distance or we use the okay kilometers to express a, or measure the distance isn't it so the unit of measuring distance is kilometers and some people use miles similarly in india we happen to choose a unit that is rupee to express the value of goods and services so gdp refers to the sum of value of all final goods and services the reason why i have defined what is a final good in intermediate good in the previous lecture is when it comes to gdp we only sum up the value of only final goods why not intermediate goods because if you are summing up the value of intermediate goods or if you are considering intermediate goods as part of your gdp that results in multiple counting because final good is the only good that's meant for final consumption but intermediate goods undergo okay any further economic activity and there it results in multiple counting maybe double counting and multiple counting and hence forth when it comes to gdp we only represent the value of all final goods and services produced within a country and this is the most important so there are three, two things that you might be noticing it so it is the value of all final goods and services produced within the country and during a specific period so when i say specific period in india we call this as a financial year or an accounting year okay so if you look at we are right now in 22 23 financial year the reason is the financial year starts on 1st april and ends on 31st march so simply speaking gdp represents the sum of value of all final goods and services produced in my country or produced in our country produced in our country that's india during this period of time starting from the 1st april to 31st march of the next calendar year is what we call as a gdp 
ok. So, you might have noticed GDP emphasizes on who, where are the things produced, GDP emphasizes on where are the things produced. Having seen the definition of GDP, now let us look at the very more commonly used formula to compute GDP. As I already made it clear in the previous lecture, there are three different approaches to compute national income, income method and output method and the third is expenditure method. So, here in this case, here is a formula to compute GDP using expenditure method. So, if you look at Y, you could call this Y as national income or the output, real output of a nation. Or simply speaking, if you think you are getting confused, you could call if as the Y represents a GDP. And how would you compute the GDP? Using this very simple formula called C plus I plus G plus X minus N. And what does C corresponds to? Consumption expenditure of all the households. Household has been the one who owns the means of a production. Okay, you, me, your family, my family. So the expenditure that we make on our needs, wants, necessities, or then okay, luxuries, anything, any expenditure that we households make, that expenditure, and the investment expenditure of the firms which produce various goods and services. The second part is we are summing up the investment expenditure made by various investors in the economy, and the third is the expenditure made by the government. So what is that? Simply, we are trying to do. Using the expenditure method, we are summing up the expenditure of all the households, summing the expenditure of all the firms that produces goods and services along with the government expenditure. So, what will be the government expenditure? Salaries, subsidies, transfer payments made to the citizens, is not it? So, there are different types of expenditure government also makes it. Like you and me purchases some goods and services, similarly to run the government, you need to pay salaries. Government do provides various kinds of subsidies. Government also helps people by simply paying them some amount of freebies, is not it? And then we know something called transfer payments, payments made to the citizens without any quid pro quo, like scholarships to the students, pensions for the disabled, old age people, widow pensions and all such payments are generally what we refer as a term called transfer payments. So, after summing up the C and okay, consumption expenditure, investment expenditure and government expenditure, to that we add the exports. So, when I say X, it stands for exports. So, why is that we are summing up exports as part of our GDP? is simple, export has been anything that we Indians produce and sell it to a foreigner. Anything that we Indians can produce and sell it to a foreigner. Generally, we have a perception, export has been that is produced in India, neatly packed and transported to any other country via cargo and that has been sold outside my country. That is not necessary because if that is how you define export, how would you define export of services? Can you simply pack a okay, tourism service of this country, take it to some other country and simply sell that particular service? Can we simply pack? education service and simply transport via cargo and sell it to other people? No, not everything could be exported. Goods could be exported, is not it? But how do you export a service? So, hence for the simple definition of export is anything that we Indians produce and a foreigner consumes within my country or outside my country is an export. Import has been anything we Indians consume outside India or inside okay, within India, but that is being sold by a foreigner is what we call import. So, now to the expenditure of Okay, households, investment expenditure and the government expenditure, we are adding the exports because all these exports are something that is produced within my domestic territory and henceforth, okay, as per my definition, I add exports. Then why am I subtracting imports? Because anything that we are consuming that has been produced by people outside India and as per my definition of GDP, they are not domestically produced. Henceforth, all the expenditure that we make on the imported goods is what I am subtracting. Okay, and that is the reason I happen to write this as C plus I plus G plus I could rewrite the same as NX. NX stands for net exports, I mean the gap between exports and imports. And this net X, okay, so net exports is simply the gap between exports and imports. The net X value, okay, the net exports value would be positive if your exports are more than imports. In such case, the nation is said to have a trade surplus. The net export value would be negative if your exports are less than imports. In such case, the nation is said to have a trade deficit. And if the net export value is 0, does mean the nation is said to have exports equal to imports. That means there is a trade balance. The trade is balanced. Okay? So, now I would expect you to find out whether India has a trade surplus, trade deficit or you have an exact balance in the trade. So, this is how we define GDP. Now, let us look at the second measure of uh, national income. So, before going to it, let me also show you the current economic data of Indian. Okay? So, this is what I happen to collect from the economic survey. So, now do not get confused with these particular terms. Okay? So, if you look at the figure 41, share of components of GDP. So, GFC stands for 
government final consumption expenditure you remember i just right okay i have defined gd plus c plus i plus g plus x minus m or net exports rather than simply using the terms called cig we use this particular standard accounting terms when it comes to government expenditure we refer it with a term called government final consumption expenditure when it comes to pfc it stands for personal final consumption expenditure i mean consumption expenditure of the households so rather than c we refer it is the term called pfc pfc stand for personal or private final consumption expenditure and gcf stands for gross capital formation gross capital formation i mean the money that we all people have spent in a year that results in okay various capital assets like land building the money spent on purchasing land the money spent on construction of factory the money spent on simply building a machine all such investment expenditure made okay which results in creation of some capital assets is what we call gross capital formation so what represents this is represented by i this is what i represented by c in the previous okay slide and this is what i represented with the z and then the net exports which i represented with the term called net exports and this is something you could just go through your economic survey to find out what exactly is the state of indian economy and here in this case you have almost for 7 years we have the data with respect to what's component is the government final consumption expenditure private final consumption expenditure gross capital formation and next exports and the left side you also have the sectoral trends okay so this is something you could find it from the economic survey now let's look at the second important measure of national income the second we have already seen gdp gdp stands for the value of all final goods and services produced in my country so it is okay we are least bothered about who is producing it anything produced in my country is part of my gdp the second important measure of national income is what we call gnp and gnp stand for gross national product national product okay i think you will understand the difference between a country and a nation the same thing holds good when it comes to gdp and gnp so anything produced in my country is gdp anything produced by my people in my country or any part of the world is gnp okay let's say your brother working for some company abroad some company okay let's say your brother is working for some company in united states of america the salary that he is making and since he is an indian citizen isn't it okay maybe he might have been for a temporary period of time he might have been there isn't it but he belongs to india he is an indian citizen he is an indian national his nationality is indian and hence for any amount of money your brother makes even outside india is part of our gnp but he is making the money outside india is not considered as part of our gdp that's the only difference so gdp is a domestic product gnp is a national product i mean the value of all final goods and services produced in a given period of time by the means of production owned by countries residents let's say an indian company has a factory that produces automobiles in europe all the what i mean the worth of output that this company produces outside my country since the company is an indian company would be accounted as part of my gnp whereas when it comes to gdp okay it is only the product that is being produced within my country and that's the difference now let's make it clear the very simple difference between gdp and gnp gdp emphasizes on where are the things produced but where are gnp emphasizes on who is producing so a foreign company producing a good and service in my country is part of my gdp but the same thing could not be accounted as part of my gnp an indian producing an indian earning money in uk or europe or any other i mean uk i mean to say whether north america or any other part of the world is part of my gnp but it cannot be considered as part of my gdp so that's a difference so now let's see the formula to compute gnp how would you compute gnp it is given by gdp plus net factor income from abroad so what do you mean by net factor income from abroad so why is it okay so what i am simply doing is that to the gdp which is the worth of goods and services produced by indians in india and by foreigners in india i am simply adding up the factor income earned by earned by indians abroad earned by indians abroad so any amount of any amount of money that we indians make outside india that's what i am adding to my gdp and subtracting the factor income earned by foreigners in india so any amount of money that foreigners make in india is what i am subtracting from the gdp and this particular okay this minus this is what i am rewriting with simply net factor income from abroad so this is how we compute gnp
so your gnp if you, is your gnp more than gdp or less than gdp that depends upon the net factor income from uh, abroad if this net factor income from abroad is positive it does mean you are adding some positive number to gdp to get your gnp and hence forth in such case for those nations the gnp would be more than gdp and when would be the net factor income from abroad would be positive if you people make i mean if your people make more money outside india than compared to the amount of money or the factor income earned by foreigners within india in such case the net factor income from abroad would be positive when would the value be negative if okay in case wherein the foreigners make more money in india than compared to what we indians make from abroad in such case the net factor income from abroad would be negative in such case what happens the gnp of the country would be less than gdp the reason is we are subtracting something from gdp to compute gnp so now i'll leave it to you to find out whether the gdp of india is more than the gnp of india or is it less than gnp of india that's something i would leave it to you and you just find out so i hope you understand the difference between gdp and gnp okay gdp emphasizes on all the goods and services produced by my people not only by my people by anyone in my country gnp emphasizes on the final value of okay value of final goods and services produced by my people at any part of the territory okay it could be in any part of the world that's what's part of my gnp now let's look at the second okay the two other measures of national income ndp and nnp ndp stands for here in this case n stand for net okay ndp stand for net domestic product and nnp stand for net national product net national product and how would you compute ndp and nnp so if you subtract the component of depreciation from gdp we call it as ndp and if you subtract the component of depreciation from gnp what we get as nnp so what is depreciation depreciation is the cost of wear and depreciation is the cost of wear and tear loss depreciation refers to the cost of wear and tear loss wear and tear loss so because let's say if you happen to buy a car and spend some 10 lakh rupees of money upon this car isn't it and you use this car for 2 years would you be think you would be able to sell the same car for 10 lakh rupees even after 2 years no the car happens to be used for 2 years and the car is going to okay is no longer going to be in the same condition the day you have purchased so there is a wear and tear there is a usage of the car and hence for the value of the car end up okay eroding and whatever the worth of the value i mean whatever the proportion of the value that has been eroded is what we call as the component of a depreciation so if you remove the cost of depreciation or the value of depreciation depreciation is basically an accounting terminology so you remove that component of depreciation from gdp what you get is an ndp and remove the component of uh, depreciation from gnp what you get is a net national product okay so now let's look at the other most important income measure that is nnp at factor cost nnp at factor cost stands for net national product at factor cost so here in this case i am going to define you two important terms that is factor cost and market price that is a factor cost and market price and this nnp at factor cost is also very popular referred as a national income let's say in this example here are some factors of production i mean the one who owns the means of production the owners of land labor capital and all these things and here is a factory let's say there is a factory that produce a petrol making a producing company a petrol producing company let's say this petrol producing company has employed the services of the factors of production it employed the factor services of these factors of production and in return made a payment to the factors of production made a payment to the factors of production and what payments made it made a payments in the form of rent wages interest and profits let's say it paid okay 100 rupees total i mean okay it paid a 100 rupees in total to this factor of production for every 1 liter of uh, petrol produced i mean every liter for every 1 liter of petrol produced this petrol making company has paid 100 rupees to all these factors of production i mean okay the money paid in the rent form wage form interest and also its own profit is going to be 100 let's say 100 so it does mean okay the amount of money spent now let's define what is a factor cost factor cost refers to the money spent upon the factors of production in producing one unit of output so in producing one unit of output what's one unit of output one liter of petrol and in the process of producing one liter of petrol what is the total money you spent upon all the factors of production 
I mean that includes the land, labor, capital and also to the entrepreneur is rupees 100. So, this money spent upon factors of production in producing one unit of output is what we call as a factor cost. This is the factor cost of petrol. But now imagine as soon as the company produces petrol, let us say the government of India imposes a tax on it. Let us say some indirect tax like an excise duty. Let us the government of India says, why do not you simply pay me rupees 40 upon petrol as an excise duty. So, in such case, do you think the petrol making company could sell the petrol at only 100 rupees because it is what is the money spent upon one liter of petrol? No, is not it? Now, the company has to sell the petrol at a price that is what we call market price, the price at which the commodity is traded in the market. That is what we call market price. And how would you compute the market price? It is factor cost plus any indirect tax component levied on it. That is how you compute market price. So, what is the difference between factor cost and market price? Factor cost is the money spent or the cost incurred on factors of production in producing one unit of output. And what is market price? The price at which one unit of product is being traded in the market is market price. And how would you compute it? It is factor cost plus indirect taxes. But agar imagine in some cases the government of India also not only taxes the product, let us say the government of India okay, has subsidized the product also. Imagine the government is also giving a subsidy on the same product. Let us say here in this case the government is giving 60 rupees of subsidy for every 1 litre of petrol. In such case, what is the government simply saying? You petrol making company, you do not need to sell the petrol at 140 rupees because 140 rupees is too much to do by people. And henceforth, what I am simply saying is that I would like to share a burden of rupees 60 from my pocket. From my pocket. Of course, it is from the taxpayer's money. In such case, what do you think is the price at which the coil making company sells in the market? It is going to be not 140, okay, because 60 rupees is the subsidy that the company receives from the government. The final market price would be right now at 80. So, now the price of petrol in the market comes down to 80. So, now how would you simply okay, accommodate this particular subsidy in this formula? Simple, you subtract this subsidy component from this. So, what you get is market price. So, the formula, I am rewriting it here. The market price formula is factor cost plus indirect taxes minus the subsidy component. This is how, okay, I mean this formula relates okay, factor cost with the market prices. So, now how could I rewrite this? Okay, let us say now let us say NNP at factor cost. So, how would you compute NNP at factor cost? So, just reshuffle the formula, is not it? It is given by NNP at market prices minus indirect taxes plus subsidies. This gives the formula to compute NNP at factor cost. Why is it NNP at factor cost in general referred as national income? Now, coming back to this case. Now, imagine look at here in this example. I already started saying, I already ended up concluding that these facts of production working for this petrol making company do make 100 rupees for every 1 litre of petrol produced. But the petrol finally in the market could be sold at more than 140, less than 140, that all depends upon the tax component, subsidy component. But if I ask you the simple question, what do you think is the best measure of income of this nation? The output measured at factor cost or output measured at market prices? I would always say output measured at factor cost is the best measure of national income rather than output measured at market price. Because output measured at market price could okay, change arbitrarily because of the government policy decisions. If the government levies a tax of 100 rupees upon petrol, the market price of petrol becomes now 200. It levies 200 percent upon it, it would become 300, is not it? So, the more is the tax component, more would be the market price. But at the end of the day, what is the income really received by the facts of production? Whoever is participating in the production process is only rupees 100. And when would this factor income of these people increase? Only when the production by the company goes up. So, if the company produces now 2 liters of petrol, what would be the factor income earned by these people? It is going to be 200 rupees. If the company now produces 10 liters of petrol, what would be the factor income earned by the people? It is 10 multiplied by 100. So, the factor income or the income earned by the factor of production increases only with an increase in more production of goods and services by the company, not simply with change in the market price. Because change in market price could be arbitrarily done by the government changing its tax components and subsidy component. Henceforth, the real measure of income of this country or the factor income of these people is simply accounted by summing up the cost incurred upon the factor of production in producing one unit of output. And that is the reason I call NNP at factor cost is also very commonly referred as national income. And how would you compute it? 
NNP at factor cost is given by NNP at market prices minus indirect taxes plus uh, subsidies. In fact, if you have looked at this particular, okay, so I brought this FCA in this left hand side and market price on the other side. So, that is how I have to change the variables. Okay? So, this is how we compute uh, national income. So, we have seen GDP, GNP, NDP, NNP, national income. And if you look at, I happen to comprehend everything in this uh, simple picture. So, starting from GDP. So, what does GDP corresponds to? Consumption expenditure of the households, government expenditure, investment expenditure, net exports. To this, you add net factor income from abroad, what you get is a GNP. So, this is the GNP. So, to GDP, we are adding the net factor income from abroad. So, now you might be thinking, why is this? In this picture, it seems to be the GNP more than, but this all depends upon whether net factor income from abroad is positive or negative. Got it? So, next measure is NDP. So, NDP or NNP here in this case is remove the component of depreciation from GDP is what you get as NDP. And how do you get NDP? This is NDP at market prices. And how do you get NDP at factor cost? Remove the tax component, is not it? Then you get NDP at factor cost because you remember that already said market price is nothing but factor cost plus indirect taxes. So, I could rewrite the same as factor cost is market prices minus indirect taxes, is not it? So, and the last one happens to be national income, okay, NNP at a factor cost. So, net factor income from abroad, okay, I also include the net factor income from abroad, is not it? When it comes to NNP, here in this case, you should note down the fact that I am referring to net national product, is not it? So, that is how you could relate all these variables. So, these are the five different most important measures of national income that we have discussed. Gross domestic product, gross national product, net domestic product and net national product and the difference between factor cost and market prices and what exactly is referred as a national income. This is something that we have discussed in this particular lecture and we will be continuing with the next lecture wherein I would discuss some other measures are very commonly used measures of income like, okay, like what we call personal income, disposable income per capita income and then we will proceed with okay, how to measure growth of an economy, what exactly is the growth of an economy and how is it measured. Okay? So, the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP and then using the same concepts of nominal and real GDP, we will also try to explore how to measure inflation in an economy using what we call as a GDP deflator. So, I guess now it has been clear the relation between GDP, GNP, NDP, NNP and then national income or net national product at factor cost and how is factor cost related to market prices. So, factor cost simply refers to the money spent on factors of production in producing one unit of output. And I guess you might have realized the fact there is a subtle difference, a very slight difference between factor cost and input cost. So, when it comes to factor cost, the profit incurred or the profit that is being paid to the entrepreneur is also included as part of factor cost. Got it? When it comes to market price, the price at which the same product has been marketed. Okay? Many a times you might have noticed the fact MRP includes of all taxes. That has been maximum retail price includes of all taxes, is not it? So, henceforth, the market price always includes the component of taxes, is not it? So, that is how the difference between factor cost and market price. We will continue with the next lecture. Thank you.